So listen, I was going to say, at the end of the day, you said Bell Mary would do the same thing. All I'm saying is one person came out of their situation and someone else didn't. And that's all I'm saying. Like I said, the Don, when it comes to the dummies, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to wake up. Yeah, listen. I, 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 Look, Ace, babe. What are we saying? It's the craziest thing ever. Like, oh, sorry. No, you got you piece of shit. You're not Gold Rogers' child. Can it be your faith in What's up, everybody? Thanks for watching the video. This is not going to be the full portion. I'll probably release part two later, so there will probably be an abrupt ending. But I hope you guys enjoy the video with us just talking about the One Piece live action, yada, yada, all that other nonsense. It's going to be a good time. But as you guys can tell by this T-shirt, there's a special message that I need to send to y'all first. This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Now, as you guys know, there was a time where I was a wee lad. I was a young rat, didn't know what I was doing in the world. And there was these hairs that I had and I was wondering, I'm like, you know, it's getting a little bushy. I don't know if I want it to be that way anymore. So I had a trimmer and I used it for the first time and I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't a great experience. We don't have to go into the details. I've already done too much. However, today we have a resolution. Today, we're big business. Today, I'm here to talk about Manscaped and specifically the Lawn Mower 4.0 and the Perfect 4.0 package because Lord knows this thing has everything. When I'm telling you, it's got ball deodorant, it's got ball toner, the trimmer is fine, the fine trimming details, no worry about bumps, nothing like that. On top of that, it's waterproof, it's got your own portable charger, it's got the little LED light to let you know that you really big business now, because who knows, man, when you got a trimmer and it's got LED lights and it's waterproof, at this point, you just Hollywood. You just making fun of everybody, like, listen, you ain't got the bag I got. Well, here we are. We're manscaped men here. That's what we do. It even came with a little newspaper to show you how to style your beard, style your your thing, your join, of course, as you know. It's been a great experience. I'm not gonna lie, if I were you, and if I was a man that cared about grooming, that cared about looking good for a special somebody, I'd invest in Manscaped and get 20% off, plus free shipping, and two gifts with Manscaped with my promo code JDLEGEND in the description box below at Manscaped to change your life for the better and become big business, become capitalist, just like Kizaru, even though, you know, whatever political affiliations you land with, that's on y'all. Don't worry about that. However, use my code and be a rat. Not the bad kind, but a well-groomed one. I'll catch y'all later. Giant thing. Lo and behold, they did like the movie premiere at the thing. So all the creators that bought the tickets were like, one in and it was just funny because i was like by this day i just have i, I know it's gonna insider info all that stuff how you and, tell me now well, we have beef you, you well you add add i i put in a friend request <laughs> a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> And you got aired? Sorry. Trap card open. 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 Wow. Ooh. So chat, what you've just seen is Murphy tried to set up par and then he hit a mirror force. And that's <laughs> it. Like all yeah. the trap cards are gone. I don't know what to it tell you. It was personal. I was ignoring was you personal. on purpose. I'll just lean into it. But nice. even that isn't because what happened was I, we posted the pictures. I think Randy posted pictures. We all took a yeah. group picture. It was it was kind of like after the movie. I was kind of everyone was kind of doing the thing, and I was just like, "Hey guys, let's get a good picture." And then someone posted it, and then Brago. Well, not not that you weren't supposed to, but then Brago was just like, "Hey yo, Par, where's the invite?" I was like, "What do you mean the invite?" And unreal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brago and I are just sitting in the rain outside while Par's got all his friends in his picture. And and then and then the the best part was was that he said on stream <laughs> that I uninvited him. <laughs> <laughs> and then so that at that point I can't he didn't bring me into the call to let me back like so I just owned it. I was like, yeah. What what are you gonna do about <laughs> it? What are you gonna do about it? Yeah, we didn't invite you. What's up? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he's just like, damn, like you didn't fly me out and shit. I was like, what? <laughs> he just kept on leveling it up and I was like, alright. 
if that's the one thing you know about Brago is he's literally like the most relaxed person in the community, but he's the biggest troll by a considerable margin. Like the quietest <laughs> troll I've ever seen. Like there is here unreal. right now. I bet you he's probably I here. knowing him, bro, knowing him, he would pop up in the chat but like, yo, I heard somebody was talking shit. And I'm like, oh, you got some nerve to be in the chat. <laughs> if you're in the chat, Brago. He's just I gonna swear. pop up and be like, what's going on? What's I would be so I would be so angry if he does that. I'm like, oh, you can't. There's no way. There's no way you can. Um But yeah, this uh this is just a preliminary discussion. As you guys know, this is we're here for the One Piece live action. I finally finished it yesterday. I was incredibly late. I'm pretty sure I missed a big window, but it doesn't matter. I got through it, so we're here. Um par. Have you finished a lot? You finished live action, right? No, I'm on episode five, but I don't really care for spoilers if we talk about that. Are you in the discussion for oh it? Like, Par, I, I told you what this was, and you're like, all right, cool, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't. It was live action. I thought that was last week. Was that Chad? Do you see? Do you hear this guy? What is going on here? Is this a joke? Are you serious, Par? Is that is that why you binged? Okay, so I saw your streaming and you like binged it the last two days. Wait, uh, what are you talking about today? Who? Me? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what um, do you think we were talking about? <laughs> what are you I was hey, I maybe it was chapter related and then you know, we can still talk about the live action. We can still talk about it. It's just I, I the, the part after Sierra Village, you know, I didn't really get. I've seen clips. I've seen clips. You know. I've seen <laughs> clips. Oh my god, I'm about to. Have, yo. Just your slip up. Just yeah. be like, man, I needed it when the elephant showed up way too early. Yeah, and then Sunisha really showed funny. up in episode eight. You're right. It's because in the in the reverie chat, I brought up stuff that I haven't seen yet, but it was. To, because like Sai was trying to you know beef with me and then I brought it up how Don Creek was cut and then you know all that stuff but uh, <laughs> yeah because he was coming at me uh, Murphy I don't know if you know about like my Bogart agenda like so like a few months ago before he showed up in the manga I, I made a huge Bogart theory and everyone Randy Sai they all somehow the most randomest people came together and was like Oda forgot. Oda Oda doesn't remember Bogard. And then and then we got the live action stuff and Bogard was there. And well the chapter came up before. And I'm like, oh, what if I thought Oda forgot, guys. And then and then they moved the goalpost completely. They're like, oh, he's not gonna do anything. I was like, I didn't say he'd do anything. Go watch the theory because I said I said he'd show up before Egghead. He wouldn't do anything on Pyre Island and all that stuff. And and so, so yesterday you can see in the messages in the reverie chat. He was just like, uh, you know, we we're talking about Bogard. And then he said, I hope Oda kills him in the live action. I was like, what? And then I was I remember like, that, yeah. I remember yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I, I forgot what happened. I was just like, Sai, you're just mad that Oda's on my side. And he's just like, he's, I don't know, he said something, something different. I was just like, oh, what about your favorite character, Don Krieg? Uh, thanks for the screen time, buddy. And then he's just, he didn't say anything after that. Oh, uh, man. I was going to tweet about it, too. So, like, as if. You know, I don't know. You keep saying you don't have any beef with anybody, but then every every two minutes you've got some new beef to talk you about. You know, I'm starting to notice that. I don't know. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. You I just make so many enemies. I think Car is the toxic Wait, one. Wait, hold on. Sai is different. He, I collab with him every week. So so that, he's... So he, you didn't invite me to Comic-Con. You took Brago's tickets away from him. <laughs> We're just making... You're literally beating up Sai in the stream. Like, he's just trying to talk, and you're like, oh, yeah, Don Krieg. Like, oh, Oda likes he's me better dead. than you. Like, I don't know, Par. You kick puppies, too? Hey, hey, all Oh, I'm, so now we're talking about kicking Bringing up receipts, all I'm going to say is I don't have beef with the nicest One Piece YouTuber. No, that. Oh, now, that's true. Now then, hold on. This is something to unpack here. No. Tekken loves everybody, but there's only one time I've ever seen Tekken angry. There's only one time, and I have it on my short chat. If you if you if you haven't seen the short, you can go to my channel. We have evidence, clear as day. I came back. <laughs> Somebody get Tekken to confirm that he doesn't hate me. And you know, you know for a fact because he has like internet problems. You know for a fact he's like he's just like, oh my god, let me call my internet provider. Let me check no. the Ethernet cord. Oh no, my computer's busted. Let me buy a new one. And then he's just like, wait, no, Murphy just kicked me out. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Yo, Tekken's bodega is something I just wasn't ready for. This guy like lagged out every five minutes. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen, man. Yeah, it's it's so wild. He's been dealing with that forever, and like <laughs> in Tekken, like I I trust that you know he's done everything possible. Then for whatever reason, it's just like. He's like, I did it, guys. Everything's perfect. And then his stream just crashes every single time. <laughs> oh, so tragic. I just it, can't time he has a one-piece stream, it crashes without fail. Yu-Gi-Oh? Fine. It, you know, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh's fine. I don't know what it is about the one-piece streams. Every time he has a Yu-Gi-Oh one, though, completely fine. He believes in the heart of the cards, man. I keep, I keep forgetting. Yeah, rule PA. That's hilarious. That's true. Rule PA is, about is a dead zone. About the live action or you know we or... were going to, but then part we told can, me we can watch. We could talk about the beginning parts. <laughs> why did I even catch up, chat? Why did I even catch up? I don't understand this guy, man. So, like he didn't so, even see the best part. You didn't so, even see Arquan. Yeah, for real. Oh no, I saw. No, no, I've been on Arlong TikTok. Oh my God, Black TikTok no. loves Arlong. It's no. crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Of these episodes are the best one. The Barazier. Okay, fair, fair, fair. I haven't seen that, yes, I've been seeing but, all the clips. But the best piece of everything related to One Piece is Arquan, and we know it. I don't call him Arlong anymore. It's Arquan. He has to be called that. That's it. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta post that on on TikTok because they so, don't know about the Arquan name. They don't, and I will let them know. And, and Murphy, you ask why? Because ask why. Matt Owens showed us today that he is 100% a black man. And the reason he showed us this is because I know, Mur I, I just, I love it, because I knew when I say this, Murphy's like, wait, what, what? Like, this is the best part about this, because there is no way you could depict the fishman in the way you did unless you're not, unless you're exposed to the culture. Every black person that has been exposed to black culture knew exactly what Arlong was. Like we know it like they, we've we all have either seen an Arlong in BET or any of those like funny black movies that are out there or there's an Ar, there's an Arlong or an Arquan somewhere in your hood somewhere, right? Just hyper ignorant, hyper hyper masculine, like hyper like it's just everything that you'd want in a depiction of a uh, a rowdy What's the word I'm looking for? What's the what's the PC word I'm looking for here? A miscreant, a, a rowdy miscreant in a, in a, in an urban community. That you know that's that's basically what you would see, right? So for me, <laughs> with two Cubans, oh my God! All right, Karen, enough. So basically, also just the way they depicted the Fishman plight, it was very much like I think with Oda, he depicted the Fishman plight in a way that was like. It related to African Americans and other minorities, but in the live action, it seemed directly tied to the African American plight, which is why it resonated with a lot of people because they're talking about they they really really honed in on the slavery part they honed and then in the enslavement, yeah, yeah, and the enslavement, and in the anime, they didn't hone in on enslavement at all. It was more of just discrimination. And the like, you're smarter than people give you credit for, and stuff like like those little comments. Oh yeah, my goodness! I and it's like I felt that too. Brought, yeah, yeah. I and was they like, really, they brought that Fishman Island lore up to the front, oh. so that it's being foreshadowed real early on. Uh, which I don't know, Jay. Did you feel? Did you pick up on what Oda was doing with the Fishman in Arlong Park when you read it the first time? Or was it no, I didn't. Not until Fishman. Okay. So I, I, I had the same that. experience. It wasn't until I got to Fishman Island that I was like, oh, this is what we're doing. That and I love awesome. that they made it clear in the live action from here so that they could just build on it. And it's so par, I swear, it's to me, it's a grave sin that you haven't seen Arquan. I'm not going to lie. You've just made an enemy of me. I can't believe it. I'm on Murphy's side now. And me and Murphy hey! fight all the time. So you don't want me and Murphy on the same team. We're actually the worst duo of all time. We might destroy everybody. So it's like, yo. But like. So I have a question then. So then how, because in, in the way um, I like. I mean, the way uh, the manga and anime do it, I like that, but that's because Oda had the plan for the longer con, right? Like the yes. five year play out. And then it's like, oh my God, wait, all this trauma that Nami went to, now it hits you in the face. It's like, oh my God, she has all this issue. Yeah, or or like, like it, God, wait. double sided. Wait, hold on, Excuse I me. heard yes, myself sorry. again. Um, and uh, so, so they moved that to, um, 
um arlong park right but did they did they do that after nami's like story her flashback or that or like after the fight or before the fight how do they play that out so they basically just sprinkled it throughout. Every mm. every time we're around the fishmen, it's clear that they're an oppressed race. And uh, and there's oh. little comments like what we just said, like um, one of the Marines was kind of manipulating Arlong to get more money out of him and he allowed it. And the Marine said, um, you're, you're more smart, or you're more smart than people give you credit for. Was that it, Jay? Yes, it was an Azumi that said that. It was, um, uh... So basically, when he offered him, okay, yeah, I'm just making sure. Yeah, when he when he basically offered him more money and he kind of gave him a good, what what was it that Arlong specifically said? There was something that he said that that made Nazumi say that. Um, I think it was. I I thought it was just that he wanted more. He wanted a higher cut than he was supposed to get, and Arlong just conceded. Or did he say something? Yeah, like he conceded and he understand. He basically explained the way the world works. And he's like, wow, like, that's very smart of you. Like, you really understand the way the world works. Like, I'm surprised. And then the yeah. moment he said that, Arlong, his whole tone changed. Like, oh, it changed yeah. completely. Like, oh, after he yeah. said that, you saw the, I feel like every black person that watched that felt the anger Arlong felt. And then he just started cooking Nizumi to the point mm -hmm. where he's like, really? Like, do we want to do this? Because I'm stronger than you. I'm faster than you. Like, he basically just sunned him to the I'm point where. nice. So that I don't have to deal with you. But if we're gonna do that, yeah. I'll show you what so kind of like power dynamic here really is. Yeah, it's kind of like he, the who's who Jimbei kind of thing, where it's like the casual racism kind of yes, thing. Yes, front. Wow. And then, yeah. And then Arlong turned it around on him, Par, after he got the the money back, and he basically made the Marines submit. Then he goes, "You're smarter than people give you credit for." And it was mm. oh, it's such a good. It was so good bad. Move. And then um, now so it makes someone sense. in the why Put someone in the um, chat um ooh, go ahead par what are you gonna say no i was gonna say now it makes sense because uh uh on TikTok there were waves of like you know the live action hype right and when it came out it's like oh my god this is amazing all the stuff then people started posting about Zoro like oh I love Zoro Zoro's amazing Every, all, all the live actors are great all the stuff right then there was like this this like week of like buggy like buggy hype and then the week after it the, not that buggy was gone it was just all fishmen are all are long to the point where I, like usually i'd be i was like ah but like the the reason why i haven't watched it yet is because me and my wife watch it together and then so then our schedule didn't line up and so i compl i didn't realize that that we were talking about all that oh, stuff yeah. right now but That's um fine. As far as the on TikTok goes, I just watched a lot of the Arlong stuff because it kept came up so often. I was like, wait, why is everyone talk? I didn't expect like everyone to love. And then because, you know, going into it, everyone was going to be super critical about Fishman, the CGI. Nobody cared at all about oh, that weird, yeah. period. Yeah. Like it was just like completely gone and all it, people were making edits. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is so interesting like why yeah. is this happening and i watched a little bit of it but i didn't watch like all the stories and yeah. now that that makes sense that because then the decision was to you know essentially bring everything related to the fishman to hook people in um pun not intended i didn't mean that to arlong Ar arquan don't hurt me but um as far as wow damn now i'm See when <laughs> Jay, when you when you were binging yesterday, something something told me I was like, hmm, maybe I should watch this stream. Maybe I should oh watch gosh. it with Jay. <laughs> you could have, you could have caught. That was a free chance to catch up, and you didn't even take it. I, I was, was wondering, I was like, damn, why is Jay watching three episodes all in one day? I wonder what's happening. That's that was, it's and I was like editing. You agreed to be a part of. That's what was happening. In my defense, did we we didn't talk about what this? Because I remember asking, and then you just said. Oh, Murphy's gonna be there and she's toxic. Like it was something like that. <laughs> wow! That oh, is that crazy gaslighting. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, hold on, let me let me check. What's that, Jake? <laughs> no, that's not what I said. So I said to him on me in the DM. No, literally no. No, dude, no. Jay, Jay, no. Okay, so listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I invited Par on stream. I have the receipts. I can go to my VOD. And literally yes. say, hey, Par, I'm having a stream recapping the live action and Murphy's going to be there. So is Brago. Do you want to come through? You said yes. And then I confirmed the date with him on Twitter. And then Ooh. I relayed Murphy's message.
to you that Murphy said she's gonna be toxic. When you, oh when, yeah, I did. You, I did say I would. I would be toxic. Uh, but but okay. But thereafter, thereafter, Jay. <laughs> wait, no, you. I don't. I don't <laughs> think you said Reek having live action on call. But then when I asked you, <laughs> hey, yeah, I should be good. Let me know what topics so I can brace myself. Respond, and I quote Jay. Murphy said she plans on being toxic, so brace yourself for her. And then I'm like, so I asked you what topics, and then you were just you just said Murphy, and I'm like, okay. And then I got scared. You said Murphy as the topic. I didn't just say Murphy. All right, I did not just say that. There's no way. I'm looking at these receipts right now. He's lying and he's gaslighting. Chat, what yo. I don't mean you put the. I have it up on my phone right now. I have it on my phone too. I'm looking at it, chat. Look, I have it here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Okay. So, so you did ask for the topics. You did ask for the topics. All right. You asked for the topics. I did not answer. I will say I did not answer in the chat. I know that for a fact. But I did say. He was like, how did this live so long? And I said, I don't know, man. She's petty. I don't know what to tell you. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I'm, I do make sense. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is I said, and, and J I like how Jay said that's not what happened, and then just read more of the things. I just <laughs> read it more. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, because you were like, no way did I just say that to part, and then you looked and you're like, fuck, that's exactly. <laughs> no. <what happened." laughs> so I thought. So matter of fact, I'm gonna have to go to this vod. I'm gonna have to go to this vod because there's no way I did not tell you this is not the One Piece live action. There's no way. Four people that showed up for a live action chat and just ended Listen. up having to deal with us. <laughs> I did. I did say that. I'm looking back at our chat now, Jay, and and I did say I can't wait to be more toxic than ever. So I really have you, no leg to stand on. That's what I'm saying. Like for me, I'm not the criminal here, right? Like I'm just, I mean, I'm just the messenger. Like, no, I, you, the, I said, let me know the topics, and you said Murphy said, like, why is Murphy <laughs> doing the topics on first stream? <laughs> And then, and then the other thing is, I know I messaged you this because it was after you pulled me on stream. You gave me the time. You say you. All right, let's just go back. 8 p.m. Easter on the 19th. You in question? That's it. That's it. I said yeah. I should be good. Let me know topics so I can brace myself. Your first word, Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no live action here. I'm the one trying to be responsible. I'm like, hey, we're content creators here. We live stream all the time. What are we talking about, Jay? I don't know what the hell could happen. And so I said, will say, <laughs> I will hold my hands up and say, he did ask for the topic and I did not tell him. All right, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair, yo. That's fair. I thought I let you know in the VOD. I'm going to go back. I swear to God, part. If I go back to that VOD and I did tell you the live action, I'm safe. That's it. In a court okay, of law, I'm safe. But if you would have just DM'd me about it, then I could have ignored you like a request. And then still wouldn't know. So that's on you. You know what? That's fine. I'll take, I'll take this one, right? I'll take this one. All right. We could run but it I'm back later. When but I'm only up. taking, I'm only taking 60... 61% of the blame. That's it. With, with For the record, I genuinely before. didn't see your friend. <laughs> I'm taking 61% of the blame. I feel bad about Par, that you're getting about 35, you're getting about 32% of the blame and the rest of the percent is going to Murphy. Yes. That, that means none of it. Wait, hold on. Like that's 8% or four what? or five, something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, just leave the remainder, whatever the remainder percentage after that is, right? Is on me? Yeah, yeah, that's like about right. six, seven percent around there. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't see anything. Well, the live action there. was great, guys. Yeah. So anyway, sorry guys, you knew the stream was gonna be ready. The point of it is, Par, you didn't watch it. Me and Murphy were talking about the beautiful scene with Arlong. Third Eye guy had mentioned something about what Arlong actually said. He said, "Oh, you think I'm not intelligent because I'm a fishman?" Once he said that, Nazumi started backtracking. He said, "Am I not intelligent because I'm a fishman?" And after that, Nazumi actually um, slid back the original cash. So, like, remember when he asked for double? Nami gave him the double. 
Nazumi gave the money back and then gave more money back because Arlong had cornered him that badly. And that's when it that's when I feel like it resonated with a lot of people. I hold on, I just came up with a, a theory. I just came up with a theory. Um you know, not that Oda isn't like super great with like all of these topics, you know, widespread, but and like the perspective of of being um like a black person who's oppressed but when you kind of think about it that scene was probably written by matt owens a long long time ago Absolutely. it might even be that the uh the who's who jimbei stuff was inspired by that stuff from the live action because oda mm. and and matt owens would have to write it together and so once matt owens gives that because i the first thought was like oh wait no I, I didn't realize it, but that would be really great for Oda because then he gets like Matt Owen's perspective and all these things and he can really harp in on these like like uh, thematics. And then I was like, wait a second, all this stuff was written a long, long time ago. And I was like, wait, probably before the who's who scene. So now it makes sense why that probably is reminiscent of that, even from just like you guys tell me the script. Huh, that's interesting. Possibly. Yeah. Matt Possibly. Owens. I think it was a really good move to bring that forward though, because Arlong isn't just I mean, I love the way Oda did it, having Arlong being just this reprehensible, easy to hate villain, and then recontextualizing everything and adding all those layers when we're in Schmidt Island. But for the sake of the live action, trying to hook a whole new crowd, a whole new audience, the Fishman uh, looks and everything, adding that layer early on, I think is the perfect choice. I agree because it it pulled a whole new audience in just in general, especially if you're watching One Piece for the first time and you see Arlong. That is like what a live action is supposed to do. You're supposed to make it very relatable to your real life, but in a way where in anime, you can't you can only relate to anime so much where you're getting like certain themes from it with the whole Fishman um, with the whole um, uh, Arlong Park saga. It kind of felt like you were watching home in a way like the way the fishman camaraderie was the way Arlong's speech was like there was a lot of civil rights leader in the way Arlong talked and Paul I know that sounds crazy but I'm not kidding when I say this like Arlong's speeches genuinely got me on my feet and emotional to the point where I was chanting FLM in the chat I don't know if you were there but I was like literally chanting FLM because I was like yo is it like the guy who played Arlong in general was brilliant like that actor like the way he delivered his lines were like next level next level to me i think he was yeah. the best actor in the show yeah i'm not gonna lie the guy who played all along was the best actor in the show um buggy yeah, was incredible in intro, and i was just like wait that's he has like an aura like in that intro where or yes i, where, I don't know if the, it's the intro but i saw uh Oh, it was Nezumi. He walked up and then uh, the, the music was playing and Arlong was sitting on his chair, like slouched over a little bit. And then it, you just felt like, like I, the word I use um, when, when I was talking about it prior, like the, the episodes I did watch and prior on, is like if, if the live action prior, the goal would be immersement. And then when I watched up until where I did, I was like, they they hit the nail on it. Like it, the, whenever you're on a Marine ship, it's like, wait, this is like, this feels legit, you know? And then when I saw that Arlong thing, and then especially the way everyone was talking about it, I was like, wow, they they nailed that like insanely well. Um, what episode is all that? Is that how, like, is that towards the end or is there stuff that happens after? Final two episodes are Arlong. Perfect, episodes. that's great. Uh, I think yeah. six. I remember the six line, like I the don't beginning. remember what provoked it, but there was a line where uh, it was, it, it's in that scene when he's like, I'm just getting started. But there's a line where he's like, I'm just playing human. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, and I was on my feet when he said that. He said, I'm just playing oh, by your rules. So I said, oh, okay, Arlong, talk crazy yeah. to me, please. I was excited. Yeah. I really was. He, part, like I said, Ar Arlong was excellent. He was excellent. It was a, episode six and seven are the two episodes. That's the main Arlong part, episode six and seven. Um, gotcha. Did you like those better than Sanji episodes? The Bardi Barat Barat? No, you know, way. My, you, you know my shorts guy. You know my shorts guys in here, Murphy. Like he keeps getting you. He keeps getting you. I don't know. I don't know why you keep doing this. I don't know why I keep coming back. I don't know why. 
No but way. Yes. He cooked her on bratier. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get her. I oh, know him. Oh, he cooked no. me on everything. Um, yeah, someone said, Barack? Question mark. Anyway, um, I like Barate a lot. I will have to say, I don't, in terms of my favorite episodes as a whole, or like my favorite arc, my favorite arc is Baratier. That's my favorite mm -hmm. arc of the live action. My favorite scenes were with Arlong. And I'm also a really big fan of Garp. And I guess we're going to get into the part. Let's get into the part uh, part where you've actually seen. And um, I've heard people didn't like Garp. I find that really strange. How did you feel about Garp, Murphy, and Parr? Like, how did you guys feel about Garp throughout the series? Um, is Murphy's like frozen? Is she? Are you still here with us? Fro Am I frozen Murphy? to you too, Jay? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not frozen. Well, now nah, you're, you're just, good. Yeah, a little muffled. Sorry. We can hear you. Um, so for me, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that too. I I think um, if I were to explain it, and and you know. I, I want to test this logic later on too. It, the way I've been enjoying this series is kind of like, it's not necessarily supposed to be the manga and, or anime, but what I imagine happened, um, especially because of the, the compression consolidation, it like the question then becomes like, does this make sense for this character? Like anytime there was a character and they need to make a change, they went up to Oda. It's like, would, can you see Garp doing this? Can you see Kobe doing this? And then like, that's when he has to test out like the, uh, basically head cannoning, like, okay, blah, blah, blah. And the thing about Garp is we don't know what he's like behind the thing. We recently saw him. And now that I realize like, uh, like how the live action was written before what we got in the manga, it might even be like accurate to say that like that influenced a little bit what we saw like the a lot of people i would imagine the anime community didn't really like the garp thing but when i saw the garp um that i saw it reminded me of the chapter that we recently got when he's like teaching that lesson that that felt really similar to that garp and that's one like two pages in the entire story that the anime community hasn't gone but other than that we don't really have that besides obviously the laughing and, and the uh, you know the um relaxness and and you know letting axan morgan slash him in in his introduction and then he just gets up because he, was, he fell asleep like that stuff w wouldn't translate super well into the live action especially because they had to from my perspective one of the things that uh, like is very apparent is that they had to nerf luffy to a certain extent like well not just luffy everybody. pretty much everybody everybody like yeah. Yeah, like my, the the thing that really uh, drove that home to me, and and the scene that I when I was watching with my wife, I was like, ah, uh, like this really solidifies it that that they had to use this perspective. It's when Zoro's in the well. There's nothing wrong with that, but in the anime and in the manga, Zoro's just jumping out of that well. Like he, there's no climbing involved. He's that strong. <laughs> Pre time skip, Luffy and Zoro can break houses island like when they lifted up the uh, the the shutters to uh kaya's mansion i'm like they can just bust through <laughs> and then i'm like uh they, they had to, they had to bring life. down yeah. um so so like you take all that into consideration and i do know that they bring in like you know garp throws luffy across like an entire like village aspect i, I don't know how far it was in, in the, the clips i saw but i i know that they do that but they relatively had to bring him down right and um, along with that, it's like now he's not as carefree, all that stuff. And so Garp, from as much as I've seen so far, um, he's he's the character I think that diverges the most in terms of like, if you asked Oda, like, does this make sense for Garp's character? Does this make sense for Garp's character? Um, because it gets to the point where it's like, the what, of, what I've seen up to Sierra Village of Garp I don't know if that makes sense for the Garp's for Garp's character at Marineford, for example. All of the things that he's done so far, I don't know how that works with Ace and all that, all of that. But as far as like, if I'm just watching live action, I loved Garp. I really liked everything that I saw on the Marine side so much so that I like I script out like part of like like the footnotes to a video and and like my ideas and my sentiment of like how I felt when I saw it, when it happened. And the thing that I was saying, I was like, I almost feel like obviously they had to make the live action 
like one piece so that the straw hat crew is there but i'm like yo oda has written many times in his separate notes that he wants to write everything that happens within the marines he wants he in a single note he went from i want to draw the thing that i want to draw the most is a story about the marines and he ended it saying that well everything ends up connecting to luffy maybe i'll uh, write about how luffy was born and i'm like what is this this is a crazy note and i i watched live action i was like man i like oda really really like drove that home to the point where i think that they could make an entire spin-off like not spin-off but like like showing everything that the marines have done in the canon story because we know about certain events in the story we just never see them if they did that as a live action i would eat that up i think a lot of people would eat that up and it also works well because that's the kind of show that matt owens uh, writes like his other shows are like uh agents of shield and then uh there was like two others the defenders all that stuff it's kind of like the justice side of things and from what you're telling me about the arlong stuff too he, he sounds perfect for all of that like showing all showing all the sides of justice all that and you know i think it's playing off really well so far with like kobe helmeppo helmeppo was great so far it and was pretty Garp. good yeah um, I'm excited to see what, what Bogart has. I imagine it's not like super impactful, but he, his screen time is, uh, I like that, you know? Gotta love so. some Bogart screen time, yeah. Yeah. I'm super mixed on the Garp thing. Uh, I like a lot of the Garp scenes and I love the act he's him, but I think they Garp to the point that he became a crutch and uh, there was a lot to explore in this world and with raw hats and we leaned so hard on garp that i started to resent i'm like oh good we're gonna watch him play a board game for the third scene in a row i would like to know more about the straw hats please so I, I think that he was a great idea execution wise i think it was easy a scene with garp in a room as opposed to the scope of the world and I just, I would have preferred if more, more of that time that was Garp would have been given the world that I wanted to explore. You know, that's a good point. I never thought about it that, that way, but it kind of made Garp like the main overarching antagonist of the entire series. You know, it's like, all right, man, it seems like Luffy's going to have to fight Garp at the end of the day. And he's going to be the final villain and part, you know. Not to spoil, but in that last episode, they kind of ended it that way in a weird sense, where Garp was like the one no, last hurdle of the thing. season. Yeah, and I'm and I, I'm just gonna say it now. I, I, episode eight was my least favorite episode of the entire series. Like it was halfway through it, I'm like, I'm just I was disengaged, and <laughs> I was really sad because I was really enjoying the series. What was it that made you disengage with episode eight? It was, I don't know what it was, but once Luffy started fighting Arlong, and once I started seeing Zoro and Sanji fighting Kurobi, I started to get disengaged completely. And I know, under, the thing is like, I understand why they went in that direction, but like Luffy saying, I don't know if I can beat you, but I'll be able to destroy the map. And I'm like, ah, that's not something Luffy would say. And that's just like, not, not in his character. And then it's like, again, it's, the fighting when it comes to live action, I didn't worry about it because there's only so much you can do, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna like it when I see it. And that's really what the case was. It seemed like something I had to stomach through. I was more, it's so funny because in the anime and the manga, I get so excited for these action scenes because Oda does a really good job of it. But with the live action, I was more excited for the dialogue and the character interactions more than anything, especially with Zef. I mean, oh my God, Zef and Garp. Oh my God, Zef and Sanji. Like that scene with Sanji and Luffy in the kitchen, prime time. That's prime yeah. time cinema. I love that. But when it yeah. came to Luffy talking, the whole, everything with Luffy and Arlong, I just didn't feel the tension I, I didn't feel I didn't feel excited when Luffy beat Arlong. I felt happy that it was done so we could move on. And I think that was mm. really sad because Arlong Park is one of my it's in my top five arcs in general. Mm. So I'm a big Arlong Park guy. I'm a huge fan of Luffy finishing off Arlong with the battle axe and crush. They did from um um I'm just gonna use a bunch of buzzwords here. From the cinema, from a cinematography standpoint, 
the falling of Arlong Park was brilliantly done. Like you really saw it, like everything was excellent. The camera angles, even the axe itself, drop it down, it was great. But when Luffy said, Nami, you're my friend, I didn't feel it and I was devastated because I felt uh, it so aggressively in the anime. So for yeah. me to not feel it in the live action, I was hurt pretty badly. I'm like, ah, this sucks. Because they really killed the um, Luffy help me scene. They killed it. Emily was brilliant. Like, I was really worried about that scene more than anything. And Emily did an excellent job with the Luffy help me scene. Like, that was really good. Um, but even Sanji's, the Sanji um, Arlong Park combo, I thought was very lackluster um and i'm sad because i like taz as i think taz makes a very good sanji um but again these are like i think this is where my manga anime heart comes in where like i am such a fan of the sanji kurobi combo like that is my favorite sanji moment and it will always be my favorite sanji moment and i felt cheated <laughs> i felt lied to like it was i was hurt watching it so like for me i think it's more of a personal problem no but no I it's really, not i don't yeah. think it is i don't think it is because so the action i thought i thought they did technically an amazing job with the actions yes. them actually fight you know sanji and zoro fighting back to back their dialogue in the middle of the action on a technical level i thought the action was amazing but this is our deficit jay and our as manga readers as anime watchers we know what that fight really is so luffy going in the water and um Tommy's sister and windmill guy gonzo and Ojiko going in the water and saving him while sanji has to go and try to kick the rock and and fighting under under the water and nearly dying and blowing into the gills and like all these really incredible things that that build up and zoro fighting while nearly you know, nearly passed out, right? All these things. I remember, I watched the car, I watched all this. And I remember when Zoro like paused in the middle of the fight and his wounds and Corey was like, oh cool, I love that they're at least acknowledging that he's still injured. And I'm all smug sitting there like, oh yeah, good thing they're acknowledging it. And then they don't do anything with it. And I'm just like, no, what are we Wait, they didn't do the, they didn't do the, no. No, 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 everything. No, they didn't, Par, I'm telling you they didn't. I was so hurt. Everything I just listed, everything I just listed, I'm listing things they didn't do. They didn't I, do I got it. that, but that's, you know what's crazy about that is um, I made a short recently uh, about uh, some of the things that they cut from the anime. Technically that scene is cut from the, the anime too, because the really? manga, yeah, because uh, they, especially early on, it was too gory to adapt. So they com they just had an Arlong block the entire cut. In the manga, it's brutal. And I had people bring up like, yo, I didn't know that they changed it to the anime i was like yeah you know tv the, and there's a lot of that in the early in the early uh series too that oda just went you know t oda does what he wants right but then yeah. the and the directors have to go a different way and now yeah. they start adapting uh the the cruelty and brutality that because it's fine on tv now but that's so yes. oh my god because that was so, like literally i think like 20 percent of my comments were like yo that zoro scene is so hard and that's anime to manga <laughs> and they didn't bring you see what they cut for usopp unnecessarily oh my oh, god no. oh my god please Mer I'm about to oh my god my chest is getting tight holy shit. oh my god yo i'm mean, gonna tell you like i get a lot of slack so like par you saw what happened on twitter when my reaction to the whole um recap episode from 1074 right when they were doing before the luffy punch Mm -hmm. Right, they had the whole um, Denjiro coming in to save Hiori, and Oda had like all the panels of us seeing Wano suffering all over again, right? Yeah, and for me, I was like, eh, I'm cool, right? I didn't really care for it. So, for me, watching episode eight, I was worried because a lot of what I was seeing, I just wasn't able to react, and it's because they cut out so many things. And for me, with Zoro specifically, the characterization, the characterization of Zoro when Arlong held him up. And he saw that scar and Arlong with all the bravado he's had throughout the entire arc. He looked at Zoro and realized, oh my God, this human cannot be allowed to live. Like, I can't, I can't. Like, 
It's the first time I've ever felt inferior to a human. Like, that's the first time he felt it. Like, yo, he's got to go. I've got to kill him. Like, his animal yeah. instincts came out when he saw Zoro still breathing after that scar. And it, you lost a lot of the characterization of Zoro and the magnitude of him being Zoro's right hand in that moment. So when they just had Zoro wounded and cutting down Fishman and then helping Sanji fight Kurobi, I was hurt. Like, I was generally hurt because I'm like, we're supposed to have, in All Alone Park, you realize it's when the monster trio is established. Zoro is established. Sanji is established. Now with the live action, it's like a bunch of, they're still the strongest, but it, the dynamic has changed completely. It's, it's changed completely to the point where it's like, I, I, I have to defend the live action, but at the same time, I have to be critical. It's like, I know they have to go in a different direction, but these are just one of these things where I'm like, I feel like you could have found a way to do it in the live action and still give the same message across while changing a few things. Yeah. That was my honest opinion of it. No, yeah, I, I think like th that makes sense. I didn't realize like all that would be cut because a, a huge part I think of Arlong Park, which I, I would imagine they still hit the note, but not to the same gravity. Um, and I have a question after this uh, little thing, but um, it was like trust. Trust was a huge thing where it's like like Luffy's out, he's underneath the, like the water, and then they have to like scrap together the last like bits of energy because you know Zoro j just fought Mihawk. He's still injured, and Sanji's trying to pick up the slack. But Sanji, I think Sanji and Zoro were both like trying to figure out who would go in the water, right? And then in the manga, Hachi goes afterwards, and then there's no they're not a beat skip they just completely went and Zoro's just like like you know laughing because Hachi gets like obliterated in mid water because that's just how his crazy anime technique worked and then Sanji just didn't even you know he just kept swimming kept swimming all that stuff and it just kept on going back and forth of like you know uh, like a note of trust and then when Luffy finally comes out they are all just like all right he got it like we don't we don't need to worry about this anymore right and then he he handles everything all the stuff and I imagine they still hit that note but like you said like that that gravity with Zoro um specifically I think for me there was two layers when when I first uh it was like Arlong and everyone was talking about how they're 10 times stronger than all the humans and like Fishman are superior and then they were like when when Arlong saw Zoro they're like at that point he just beat a few of the fishmen so then he's just like oh man is this guy like a fishman like th that's kind of what went through my head and then when he saw the actual wound because he ripped it off or whatever he pulled the, the bandages off i think then he was like no this guy is this guy is a demon like this is he, he can't be human he can't yeah. be human man and and th that was what was interesting about the like the well thing that i brought up earlier where um, I said something and I, like I, this is a hot take and, and I, I didn't want to say this on, on, on Twitter. I was saving it for a video, um, but it was kind of like I wouldn't, you know. Spit I, it out, Par. I, Just spit I, it out. I, I, I want to confront. I want to say it because because like I would say this to Matt Owens, too. I, I've, I've been critical with him in front of him. We've uh, talked a few times, too. But as far as in anime adaptation like a live action it didn't feel like an anime being adapted it felt like a like it felt like a story with like action scenes like like it felt like a like like a normal it didn't feel like you know when i think about even marvel like there's some stuff in marvel that's like tony stark should have died like 10 times over but because it's like a comic book world he's fine he, he, like he shouldn't be okay in that suit but then for some reason in in the like the one piece live action they stuck to like the realism that almost didn't make sense mm, but they started off yeah. with a weird note because um i thought and, and this kind of catfished me in a way because i remember telling my wife i was like oh they're gonna do this right but then they fought axe and morgan i was like oh no they they, they're nerfing everybody. This is what's gonna happen. Yeah, and they, kept on doing it. they made the accent look way too strong. I'm not gonna lie. The, the like, scene oh, that I'm man. talking about is, the, is specifically with the safe. That tricked me because Luffy struggles to pull it out. Our our Luffy, that Luffy's breaking everything. That Luffy broke a giant like 20 foot statue just by 
accidentally flinging into it. He couldn't lift the a safe out of the ground. Fine. They fly out the window. Nami should be dead. Nami should yeah. die. She yeah. didn't die. I was like, okay, all right. They're using they're using sort of anime logic. This is good. This is good. And then, and then for whatever reason, after all that, Luffy can't lift the safe, but Zoro can. And then Zoro just <laughs> swings it over and then walks it up. I'm like, okay, Zoro's really strong. Great. But then I was like, so then what happened in the fight? Why is Accent? Why? What is? Ha why did Luffy need fi help fighting Accent Morgans in the manga? Luffy didn't even touch the man. Zoro, Luffy had his back turned towards him, and it was super disrespectful. And then Zoro just came up and slashed him. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. This is cool for for the thing. They need to make all this stuff like exciting, all this stuff fine, right? But then you start going to you know several 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 scenes and then Zoro can't jump out of a well and then you take that and it's not anime anymore because in every <laughs> no, wait, single anime all right. All right. Be before he can't jump out of the well he gets knocked out with one hit with oh my spear. god I forgot about that he got knocked out by a pan I was yeah. like there's no oh, way bro a Unbreakable. A beer uh, bottle. You just yeah, I remember. Yo, oh, chat. You remember my reaction to that? I'm like, there's no way he got low lifted by a bottle. There's no. Way. You keep going. You're <laughs> no, no, on a roll. You're you're 100 right. Like, to, at that point, like that scene didn't feel awkward because it was in the context of what came prior, right? So that one didn't hit me. But then now you exposing. It's like yeah, like our like the real Zoro um they did a weird thing because uh, i like the it's like game balancing they they had to nerf all the energy so they gave luffy more dialogue they had less time so they had to give more dialogue with zoro it seemed like they took out a lot of this power and then made him edgier which it's a little weird in the co in, a, in a grander scheme because of like you know the the various things that Zoro goes through and you see his emotions drained from him whereas he kind of like starts off that way and I'm I, I like I imagine like later on the episodes I see I'll learn a little bit more but it's like the the Zoro that we'd get he'd get hit by the bottle and then look at them and then kill them with his eyesight like that's how that's how ridiculous that Zoro is and yeah th he fought the Neon Brothers in the in the series but like that's still like like you know what i mean like he didn't he, he just got stabbed by buggy he fought Kuro. like he was dealing with it until luffy came and and then luffy just came in in the manga and then he was obnoxious because he got hypnotized and they don't even have Django in the thing which is you know a whole different that's, thing yeah. but you know going back to the well thing that's where i was like ah oh, man like they this doesn't feel like an anime and and the other part that I, I, I was uh, pulling from is I saw like the Bleach live action a little bit and I'm not saying it's good or not, but they they kept true to a certain aspect of like speed and running. And then it was weird because Captain Kuro was just like supersonic. And then my wife, she's seen all <laughs> Yo, of that. Yo, that's true. Yo, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, and my wife saw it. She's seen uh, East Blue. She knows it. And she was like, Captain Kuro can do that? And I'm like, he, he can yeah but like it is weird here because zoro can't jump out of well but this man's light speed like what's he's, happening? <laughs> Yo, cool. so that was the thing right so Mur murphy have you uh, this is not this is not to set you up have you actually like read or watched bleach you're muted your mic's muted i'm muted okay oh, no, now, now you're, you're back muted. you're back you're back yeah yeah i said have you read or watched bleach Okay, he didn't oh, but she said no. She said no. All right, she said no. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. She, she acts like Mike muted is off the records. Like that's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What I was saying when Kuro was like flash stepping around in Bleach, they have like like Soru and CP9 where they just like vanish and shave. They have this thing called flash step, and the way Kuro was moving. I'm like, how on earth is Luffy supposed to catch him? And then halfway through the fight, he just stops doing it. And I'm just like, wait, why did he stop? Like, I just like, my man was disappearing. He was disappearing in the anime, disappearing in the live action. And then he just stands there and waits for Luffy to cock his head back and then knock him out. And I'm just like, I mean, again, these are nitpicks, right? At the end of the day, I've already stated this, the fighting for the live action, I couldn't care for it. I really couldn't care for yeah, it. Like no. the choreography was the best they could have done, 
but I didn't care for it. So like, these are all just like, if I really wanted to be a critic about it, I could have been, right? But- I feel like yeah. his super speed was a part of his cat powers though, eh? No, it's supposed to be. It is. It's supposed to be like it's. It's his technique in the anime. Why is that so different from Luffy being stretchy? I don't. I honestly don't understand y'all's qualm with this. It like the physic, the physicality involved, right? Like Luffy, yeah, he's stretchy, devil fruit power, right? But at no point prior, right? In in the manga, for example, Luffy can ascertain uh, where Kuro is to a certain extent. It's just that Kuro is like killing his own teammates and then Luffy gets upset and then he one hits him, right? He yeah, can he do shot. that. But then prior to that scene in the live action, and throughout the entirety of, of the story, right? And I've explained this to people too. People are like, oh, Buggy was so much scarier in the live action. I'm like, no, Buggy was not scarier in the live action. It's just that Luffy is weaker in the live action. They made all the antagonists I've seen thus far closer to what they are in the manga to a certain extent, they they gassed up Axan a little bit beyond, but Axan <laughs> came on like like a giant. He looked like that guy, but he, until he wasn't. But Buggy right. was that guy. Like I, that was that was the post that I was Buggy talking about. Was. Buggy actually killed people in the manga. I think Buggy was scarier in the live action, not because of his actions, but because of the framing of him. Like, like in the, the manga, ready, yeah, Buggy right. is a psychotic. Yeah, the slave. That's a great example, Jay. Uh, he's in the manga. Know, yeah, Buggy's that's a fair. Psychotic yeah. clown, but they lean into the meme side of it. And in the live action, they lean into the psychosis of it. They lean into him like chaining people up and demanding laughter. And there's like a presence. It's not so much that he's a different type of character. It's that they they honed in on this very like scary, unhinged presence. Yeah, I. it's interesting because it's like, I wonder how that's going to scale up because the current buggy we have is like that. But that that's what essentially what I was getting at was like a lot of people take what current buggy is like and forget that buggy has always been this person. Even now, it's just buggy isn't a dictator of wano who suppressed for 20 uh, like an entire nation for 20 years so it's like you kind of forget that we well, you know buggy was taking over towns throughout the east blue and he was introduced as like one of the strongest people so much that his flag was recognized by Usopp, right? Like by the people on the thing. That's how much reputation he has. And so they translated that well into live action. So they did a, a very good job of that. But what I'm saying, going back to like the Kuro thing, like the physicality required to do that didn't translate well to Zoro. Zoro and Luffy would be able to keep up with that. There's no reason for them not to at that point in the story in the manga, but the reason why is they had to nerf them in weird ways. And it was interesting because like my wife was watching it with this context, like, okay, so like, you know, it feels like normal people powers, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, there's the devil fruit. Yeah, they stretch out this thing. And then wait, why do you see, how are they supposed to even deal with that? And then Luffy just does. And she's like, okay, that, that's interesting and i said the same thing and this is actually a good like uh segue into what i was going to ask now that you guys have finished the series i tweeted something after watching that episode and i think i think based off of what you said jay so far it would be accurate and what i tweeted was um for people who enjoyed the series and have never touched one piece um i would I think that every single part so far feels grander in the manga. Like, I think that every single, like, from the fighting aspect, like, all these things, they get time to cook. And now hearing about the Arlong Park stuff, that one would change. But everything that I've watched, it's like, I think everyone would enjoy it because it's, you, you get to see more of the world. That was another thing that I didn't necessarily like in the live action was, like, you didn't get to see, like, most of pre like chapter 40 when they're traveling you see the whole ocean you see everything and then they like chose like close quarter angles even it, the, the really jarring one was uh in um syrup village when they met Usopp. i don't know why they just chose to like have like chin shots and like no no, no all the time all the time yeah car. yeah all yeah time. whereas in they're the, like in trying the... to see up people's noses 
when you when you look at like the the manga from memory it's like you see the entire village we don't get to go inside but when you go to whatever restaurant they were at you don't see the restaurant you just see the, everything you know what i mean and it's like this yeah. large large world the grandness of it um the powers the excitedness that there is like i think everything would be elevated um to to a to an enjoyable level i feel like i feel like even though things weren't uh, done perfectly I think it was done in a really good way where once people go to the source material they'll enjoy it they'll it'll be a a, a good experience well and and some people have been making that transition I've been hearing the community so it'll be yeah. interesting to see my one argument with that part would be that I actually liked Mihawk more sir you need to get close to your mic yeah, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, so, he hit us with yeah, that man. ASMR I with Mihawk. I was yeah. like, damn, is this for like effect? Like, are we trying? Is this no, 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 no. I was so sad. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I was going to say I liked Mihawk more in the, in the live action than I actually did in when he was introduced in the Barate. I think they did. I think Mihawk's introduction is probably one of the best ones. If not the best introduction. The Mihawk stands lie. have already come after me. I'm not trying to participate in this conversation. Oh, Why? Are you going to slander I'm... them? Murphy, what does this take? Murphy. No. No. Murphy. I'm here. I'm Murphy. Here. I'm here. No. Murphy. No. Part J. Chat. Make blood. Murphy say it. Nah, you can't. You, ha you have to say it. You don't like Just Mihawk, every do you? Every sentence end with like, I like Mihawk. Mihawk. I like Mihawk. <laughs> <laughs> like say all your slander like and then just end it with I like Mihawk. <laughs> I do like Mihawk. No, That's the live action Mihawk was excellent. I agree. Manga Mihawk is also excellent and super not stinky. <laughs> it's, it's 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 an inside joke at this point, Par. We okay. basically Murphy basically said I, I asked her Mihawk versus Shanks, and she said Shanks because he has better hair. And he said, it looks like Mihawk doesn't bathe. And she <laughs> calls an entire, my Jay shorts guy got a handle, hold of it. Oh and my yeah. gosh. Jay yeah. and I were memeing, like just back and forth, leaning into the shtick. It was clearly a joke. Which is funny. <laughs> but not because to the internet. <laughs> not to the internet. Because someone clipped Murphy saying that and then posted it on Twitter. And it was hilarious. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I loved every minute of it. That's funny because Mihawk is probably the most uh, well like, maintained pirate the in the story. That was the, that was the joke. I okay. called the classy guy stinky. It's like the most low hanging fruit, and people are like, she's serious. <laughs> Cancel her. Do you see these One Piece YouTubers? Yeah, there it is. These damn One Piece Gosh. YouTubers. Don't read the story. All that <laughs> stuff. Bro, yeah. now that I'm on Twitter, I, I, I see I see how, like, everybody gets antagonized so like i you know not to name names but i'm like ah oh, i now i know why you're such a so combative all the time like not you guys but the few <laughs> won't name names it's not probably you. already known you're not the problem you're not the problem murphy's not Me? even on twitter so she's free she's oh, not even free right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best yeah. choice I've ever made. Literally the best choice you've ever made, Murphy. I swear, you would hate it. You would hate Twitter. Like it's it's really inciting. It's insightful, though. It's very insightful. Like, sometimes I wonder, like, like sometimes I'll just react to something, like what anime, whatever, and then s s it leaks in like this, this stinky. Like you can smell it, like a stench. <laughs> And I, I'm like, I'm mid, I'm chilling, I'm vibing. Jay, Jay knows because I came into his stream and I told him I'm now on Twitter. And he gave me a crash course and he proved it. It was scientific. He, he, he laid out three tweets. He told me exactly how many impressions they would get by the end of the night. Exactly, like within a thousand, he was correct. And, and it was insane. It was insane. And like for, but, but that stench is like, I've been on YouTube for a, uh, I, I started getting on Twitter like this last month. So two years on YouTube and I'd live stream and I, I was like, where did this unhinged person come from? Why are they coming at me? Like you see them spamming, like they wanted themselves to be heard because for whatever reason, they don't register that. Like I didn't read your comment on purpose. So then, and then like, you know, instead of then you don't read it, then they super chat and it's like, all right, fine. You super chat it. I'll read it. 
And I'm like, what is, where did this, where did this spawn from? And now that I'm on Twitter, I'm like, oh, this spawned from you going back and forth with some dude, like for three, three whole days because spoilers <laughs> came out and you didn't let me, I'm just reacting here. And now you came at me like, oh, so you didn't notice like the, the little <laughs> panel on the side, Oda is a hypocrite. And I'm like, brother, watch it happen. <laughs> And then you go on Twitter, you see like a 40 page thesis on why this is off. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. How, Murphy, did, how did this come in? Do you oh, remember yeah, Murphy? You do you remember when I told you about what One Piece Twitter is like? It was the, it was the same Mihawk, Mihawk and Shanks stream yeah. of all the stands. What part yeah. just explained is everything I explained to you in that stream. And I know you remember it. Yeah. I know you remember it. Yeah, I, I, I promise you. There's nothing in me that wants to go to Twitter.com. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny because now, like, I'll tweet something, and and Jay taught. Oh, thank God we had that stream, Jay, because muting, tweeting something like that you know is you. you I just wanted to get things out and mute notifications. <laughs> Best thing ever. Best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. Just tweet some absolute nonsense. No, I'm not, I'm not crazy like you. I'm not. It's just you, not. I'm, I'm not retired. Scientific. But but I I'm retired. I'm retired. I tweeted the the live action one. I was like, oh, I want to see the discourse on this one. Surprisingly, not that crazy. Uh, I tweeted something. You might have seen it. It was like, oh, in a few weeks, the you know, oh, we have all this amazing One Piece positive hype, and then the anime is about to adapt a scene that's gonna get a pseudo canceled, and you know, it's all that stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. These two. These two. No no no. Six people having separate conversations days on end. They're still having it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I haven't been on Twitter, but like, I'll just like see like 15, 20 notifications. Like, oh, I haven't, uh, that's these guys still. I'm like, how are you still going? It's crazy. It's so it's crazy. A, it is a crazy place. It really is. But thank God for the most part, everybody enjoyed the live. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. The reaction to the live action in general was kind of a mixed bag. From really, I would say it was no. It was like more eighty percent positive, twenty percent negative. That's I think that would be a good take on it. I think from the general consensus outside of the internet, most people loved it anyway. Um, but to bring the topic back in general, right? Because we've talked about we haven't really delved into Baratia yet because there's a lot of good in Baratia. I think we've kind of exhausted All Along Park quite a bit. I mean the Nami scene, the flashback. I don't help. I don't hate Belmare. I I was scared of saying that word in front of Murphy because I I know how she gets. But I liked Belmare. Don't do it, Murphy. Don't. <laughs> don't Hashtag say. It. Oh my God, yo! I was like, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Um. That's the first beef we had. It's the first beef. She thought I hate Belmare, and I told her she loves kicking puppies. So that was that was. The, the oh, that was the trade off. That Got was the it. start of a great friendship. It was it was actually fantastic. <laughs> Um, what could you have possibly said about Bellamere? What? I know, right? I don't remember. What I did know. I say? He, he legit said he hates her. <laughs> I the really lady don't. got shot, bro. <laughs> what are you What are you doing? <laughs> I <laughs> don't know. Protecting I, I, her children. And he's like, not... F mom. Like, <laughs> she, she's F tier. No, like, there's no way. There's no way I said that. There, I, I need to find the proof. Jay. I don't remember, and I know I didn't say it, so it's fine. I he just I said didn't. to Dan was the best One Piece mom, and I said more um, than Belmare, and he said and yes, I said yes, and, I, and I then did. I started a hashtag. Uh, How do you, you know what, Par, Par, what's your what's your take on that? Who's a better mom, Dadon or Belmare? Who's a better mom? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... Uh, that's rough. I mean, uh, being a mom is very difficult. So no, don't you know. give me the political answer, Par. Answer the question. <laughs> what is the matter with you? Who <laughs> decide? Uh, who's a better mom? Um, so the okay, okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Par. This is actually um. I would say. Uh, it's interesting because I'm actually gonna be talking about Bellamere in a in my uh my in, a, in t three videos from now. So I just did a, a bunch on Bellamere. Say a name. Say a name. Bar. In my opinion, would be better because because unlike uh, Bellamere, <laughs> Dadan had the recurring like uh, fortification of Garp, you know, coming through and like applying pressure. 
because like she was a criminal. We don't know how that all that started, right? Started with Ace and she does it. She learned to love it. She learned to love it, right? Whereas Bellamere, just like she was a prideful Marine, abandoned her post, abandoned her life. So, was ready to uh, die. And then also the thing that a lot of people forget is that we don't know the context about Nami, but she didn't register Nami. You know what I mean? So like that whole context, she had the foresight of like protecting her and taking that upon herself. And she took that literally to her grave too. So like the, 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 the you know, as far as you guys forcing me in this situation to choose, I would have to put Belmere above not saying that Dadan is an S tier because the moment I think that that uh, you that made the right choice. people um, you didn't you didn't you didn't make the right choice that people <laughs> like need not need to realize but but forget is like Dadan has the benefit of being a recurring character and she got the like vision because you know man. Belmere is a cool. I was about to say something trying to really like terrible. have a real discussion, and you and I are just trying to fight. That's it, like Par, you're taking this so seriously, and I'm like, nah, man, you're you've hurt me. I'm so like, done with you, Par. I'm so also, done with you. <laughs> I also like, uh, I you know when it, hey, you know this because <laughs> we had the whole father thing in in the in in Randy's thing, and then I remember, and yes. then they were saying some crazy things, and then I just boom had to you know hit them with the the hard stop real quick, you know. Like, <laughs> We went too far in that we conversation. Went, I was about to say something crazy, and I'm like, you know what? It's not. It's not good. I won't say it. I won't say it. Yeah, not about yeah. So, yeah she's, you know, she's, and does Gray's terminal not hold any weight? Because her showing up for Ace in that moment to me was absolutely brilliant. Burning fought. Burning. Everything's burning. Pirates. All of that. The Don pulled up to save Ace, and it's not even like you know what I'm saying. Like, come on. I'm with you. So then here's the thing. I in my the way I would measure that, Bellamere would do the same thing, right? I mean, Bellamere would beat their asses too. <laughs> Bellamere I'm rocked so Arlong crazy. shit. Okay, she so the so barrel of a gun in Arlong's mouth. Yeah, she almost ended in the anime. The in the there, anime, but yes, she yes. had like no, in the she has a Jay. Anime yeah, the manga, same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I always wonder that. I was like, damn, if she didn't have a heart, she could have ended the arc right there. She could, cause. She had it in the thing. She could have pulled the trigger, but she hesitated. So, listen. At the end of the day, your points are valid, but <laughs> I'm just gonna disagree, <laughs> right? Because I believe I was correct, right? And then I, I can't. I'm trying not to be toxic. I'm trying. I'm trying to be a better man. I'm trying to be Why? so much better. Because if I say this. <laughs> if I say this, I'm getting canceled. It's over. Like I'm say done. I'm, I can't. I can't. I'm, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. He said. Oh, he no, said, "Let it. Let I it be free." What do you think, think I'm gonna I say, Par? Is it food related? No. Okay. 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 <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> so, so listen. I was gonna say, at the end of the day, you said Bell Mare would do the same thing. All I'm saying is one person came out of their situation and someone else didn't. And that's all I'm saying. Like I said, the Don, when it comes to the Don, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not, I'm not sorry. Yeah, listen. Look, Ace, dude. What we say, dude? the craziest thing ever. Like, oh, sorry. No, you piece of shit. You're not Gold Roger's child. Like, yeah. Like, oh. I told you I didn't want to say it, but it's like, yo. The, the, right the chat said, he said it's a skill issue. Oh my God, I can't breathe. Like, yeah. Jay, at, Jay, if you were in that situation, you dead ass would be looking at Nojiko like, where you at? Where you, where, where's the Congress at? <laughs> yes. Yo, Murphy is done. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all I can say. I don't know what I don't know what else to say. I'm not sorry.